Today, we're going to talk about the identification of airspace, specifically Class E, and whether or not you need an airspace authorization to fly in a specific area. Okay guys, so I got another FAA Part 107 question of the week. This one is going to be super helpful because it's the type of determination that you'll be required to make when you're actually flying your drone for money. You really shouldn't discount the ability to uh, be able to identify airspace that you're going to be flying in. So here's the question. You've been asked to fly a property for a local real estate agent in the area. It's shown below where the map says tank farm. It's near the number one in a red circle. And based on the map below, if you stay below 400 feet above ground level during your flight, what airspace will you be flying in and do you need airspace authorization prior to your flight? And the possible answers are class G airspace so you don't need any authorization, class D airspace and you do need prior airspace authorization, class D airspace and you do need prior airspace authorization, or class E airspace and prior airspace authorization is needed. Okay, so let's start with a quick review of the sectional legend. And you should always do this when you get a sectional question on the test. It's always going to be helpful in some way. So here we're looking at the airspace information section that is has a red rectangle around it. And the airspace information section of the sectional legend shows that a dashed magenta line means class E airspace and in parentheses it says SFC, which means to the surface while the faded magenta line means class E airspace with a floor at 700 feet above the surface. So the real question is, which of these lines surrounds the area in which you've been asked to fly? Okay, so looking at the map, you've been asked to fly where the map says tank farm, and this area is just underneath a dashed magenta line. And that means that class E airspace extends to the surface, just like the st sectional legend states. So because class E airspace is controlled airspace, you're going to need authorization. So I know I've just covered this one in a little bit of a non-traditional way, kind of giving you the right answer before I explained the wrong answer. So let's cover the, la the other two answers. If you were to fly within the faded magenta area on the map, Class E airspace would only extend down to 700 feet above the ground, meaning you'd still be in Class G airspace up to your 400 foot limit and you would not need airspace authorization. So if you're flying in the faded magenta area, you're in class G up to 400 feet, really up to 700 feet, even though you can't fly that high. So you're in class G and you wouldn't need prior airspace authorization. Likewise, if you were flying within the dashed blue line on the map, this is class D airspace from the ground here. It says up to 4,200 feet MSL because it's got that 42 in a, a dashed box. So you would also need airspace authorization here. This question is a great primer for something you'd actually see in real life. It's important to know the airspace around airports near you so that you can be confident when a client asks you to fly in a specific location. Um, at a minimum, when you get a request from a client, you're gonna wanna ask yourself at least these three questions. What type of airspace will I be flying in? Can I get authorization through the Lance system? And if not, can I submit an airspace authorization through the drone zone and get approval before I need to fly this flight? That one might be a little bit harder because a lot of times I know our clients call in last minute and want things done. Um, but if you can get airspace approval through the drone zone quickly enough, then you can fly it. Once you know you either don't need airspace authorization or you can get it before your flight, you can confidently tell your client that you can fly their property. So although the FAA has rolled out the Lance system to airports nationwide, the other thing that you should know is that this doesn't mean that every airport has actually started using the Lance system. So it still might not be available at your local airport. And it's important to know this and check for any flight restrictions before you actually schedule a flight. Uh, the last thing that I'll say is if you need to get an airspace authorization, you are able to schedule Lance approval for up to 90 days in advance. I've really only found this feature slightly useful since the Lance approval is immediate and has become part of my workflow at the location. But if you're a hyper planner and you know that you'll be at that site exactly the time you schedule your Lance approval, then this could be a great option for you. If this video was helpful for you, do me a favor and subscribe, hit the notification bell below, or just give me a like. I'd appreciate that as well. Thanks.